Having a new child as an Australian expat can be an incredibly exhilarating, stressful, wonderful, joyous occasion for so many. But when it comes to our personal finances, there are so many things we need to think about and we really need to action quickly, particularly as our little ones start getting older and older. So in this video, we're going to walk you through exactly what you need to be looking at, what steps, structures you should be putting in place and what really matters from here on out. So let's dive right in. Hi there, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner here in Singapore. Thank you for tuning in. Today we're having a look at the key things you need to be thinking about as a new parent, as an Australian expat. So number one is the education savings buckets. Now with education, we typically have four different stages, which really translates to about three different buckets of money we need to be setting aside for schooling. So number one is the nursery slash daycare, preschool, whatever you wanna call it. That's really the money that's gonna be spent in the first two to three or four years of your child's life. Now, even nursery is very expensive for expats. So we need to be setting money aside and the sooner we can get started on this, the better that's going to be. Given we're going to be looking to spend this money in the next two or three years, we want to be keeping it liquid and in my personal opinion, risk-free which really means it should be sitting in a bank account, hopefully generating a bit of interest, but accessible at a moment's notice. The time frame is too short to really put that money at risk. We then have bucket number two, which is really the primary school funding. So that's really from ages five through to 12 or 13. Chances are they'll be at an international school here in Singapore, and those fees could be anywhere from 25 all the way up to $45,000 at the time of recording. Of course, those fees will continue to climb as we have all seen over the years. Now, this money, obviously, we have a bit more time before we need to draw down on it, and we're not going to be drawing down on it all at once. It's going to be an annual expense that we need to cover. So this money, we can take on a bit more risk. So we might want to put this into a diversified portfolio of exchange-traded funds, unit trusts, potentially stocks, whatever suits, suits yourself, and also making sure that we're not taking on too much currency risk. So if we're going to be spending that money in Singapore dollars, then having an overweight exposure to Singapore dollars would be sensible. That doesn't mean that your entire portfolio should be Singapore government bonds and Singapore stocks. That would be a terribly poorly diversified portfolio, but just making sure you're removing or reducing some of that currency risk where possible. That brings us on to bucket number three which is really the secondary schooling and university or college. Now, for a lot of Australian expats, you may be thinking, look, I probably won't be in Singapore at this time. We might be back in Australia, we might be somewhere else. So this is where we need to think about, A, the structure of the investment. How do we own it? Is it through a trust? Is it via an insurance bond, via a company, via some other structure, or do we leave it in our own names? And then we need to look at what investments actually make up that structure. So if we're thinking, look, we're probably gonna be studying or living back in Australia at the time, then having an overweight exposure towards Australian dollars is going to be the sensible way to play that. But of course, Australia taxes capital gains, taxes dividends, so we wanna be giving some thought to how we structure the ownership of those investments as well. So they're really your three buckets, cash, liquid, low risk, shares, ETFs, etc. well diversified, balanced and liquid, and three, tax efficient, uh, efficiently structured, diversified investment portfolio that can grow over time. So that's the education savings taken care of. The second one to be thinking about is your emergency fund. Now, an emergency fund is designed to cover three to six months of, uh, three to six months of living expenses. Have a child? Of course, those living expenses probably go up. You'll be going through hundreds of nappies every week, wet wipes, food, milk powder, whatever else it might be, uh, your $40, $50 bottles, all of these things all of a sudden become very important and they're not cheap. So we need to be looking at what are our regular expenses and therefore, how much should we be topping up our emergency fund by? Now, if your child's already at school or daycare or uh, prep or whatever it might be, factor in those school fees as well into that emergency fund. So make sure you've got enough sitting there. Uh, if 
your husband or wife is taking time off work, you again might want to be thinking about upping that emergency fund that little bit further. The next topic is insurance. So not the most exciting, but an important one with a little one. You now have a financial dependent. It's critically important you don't just look at your health insurance, look at life cover, total and permanent disability cover, critical illness or trauma cover, and income protection. These are incredibly important. We typically want to ensure that at the very least, the remaining school fees are covered for your child. And if you're thinking that's gonna be private school for their entire education, then you're going to be looking at somewhere between 500 and $800,000. Terrifying number, but we may as well get over that hump and make sure that we've got insurance in place because it's not gonna get any cheaper. And if we do find that there's some public school thrown in there, great, that might uh, allow you to reduce your insurance coverage. But for the time being, for Aussie expats in Singapore, if they're going to international school, we need to recognise those fees are quite large and factor them in. The final thing to make sure we're updating and we're across is our estate planning. So when we have a child, we want or child or children, we want to be updating our will, make sure that they are either included or excluded. I'll leave that up to you. Usually we'd want to have our children included in our will as a beneficiary. We want to be thinking about perhaps putting in place a testamentary trust, which allows you to control and govern that money uh, effectively beyond the grave. For most of us, we don't want our children receiving large sums of money at such a young age. So we need to think about well, when, would, when would they be financially responsible? A good way to reflect on that is to think back to what you were doing in your teens, 20s, and then decide on what a financially responsible age actually is. You might decide that those assets are gonna go into a trust if you pass away until your child reaches 30, and then they're allowed to receive some of that money. Again, just things to think about. The other couple of items on the estate planning side to give some thought to are temporary guardians, someone to look after your child or children in the event of your passing, while the permanent guardians usually fly from Australia to come and collect the kids, take them home. And of course, the permanent guardians who would be charged with or uh, effectively responsible for looking after your child or children for the long term. Now, it's also important to make sure that you've got backups for each of these. What, what if something happens to your temporary guardian or your permanent guardian, or heaven forbid you're all on a flight together and you all pass away? We need to make sure that we've got backups for each of these. And the final part of your estate planning is the powers of attorney. In Singapore, it's a lasting power of attorney. In Australia, it's an enduring power of attorney and an enduring guardianship. Estate planning is a morbid topic. Most people don't find it terribly fun or exciting, but spend a few hours, half a day, getting these documents in place and know that your family is looked after. So there you have it, a bit of a new expat parent checklist. I hope that helps. Drop me a note with, uh, in the comments with any questions or even just your own experience on how you've gone with your little one and of course, sorting out your finances. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to subscribe and see you in the next one.